In this unit, we regard a communication network as the means of interconnecting devices, so that two-way communication is possible, and we shall focus on networks that interconnect telephones or computers. However, you should bear in mind other forms of network, such as television and radio networks, which are primarily one-way broadcast networks. Multi-service network architecture combines the multiple layers of legacy architecture into fewer network elements, thereby removing barriers to operational efficiency and flexibility. It directs and carries data from one network node to the next. An ISDN is an example of a multi-service network which can be loosely defined as a network that provides a range of services over a common transport mechanism, that is, a common means of transferring data between devices. This may mean that different services receive different treatment to ensure that certain assurances about quality are fulfilled. The Internet may be regarded as another example of a multi-service network, although the quality of service may not meet users' requirements for some applications. Private networks that operate to the same specification as the Internet can offer users a better quality of service and the network operators can exercise greater control over the traffic. Such networks are called intranets. In large internetworks, communication between systems is a complicated process and to cope with this complexity, the hardware and software in the systems are organized as a hierarchy of layers each layer performs some of the functions necessary to achieve communication between systems. The layers, particularly higher layers, are mostly implemented as software components of communication networks. It is very important to appreciate the hierarchical nature of communication systems. Each layer, except the lowest, is built upon the layer below. There are rules called protocol that are expressed in terms of the format of messages exchanged between two systems and the way in which the messages should be interpreted. The peer layers exchange data as though there is a direct link between the two as shown in the figure but in reality all the data is passed down through all the layers and is carried by the physical media in the form of signals. In 1978, the International Organization for Standardization, ESO, defined a framework for describing the layers in communication networks, called the Open Systems Interconnection, OSI reference model. Although many networks may not fit the strict definition of the model, and the model has been modified with the introduction of sublayers, the OSI reference model does provide a very good framework for discussing communication networks. The OSI reference model has seven layers. These are illustrated in the figure shown. The layers were chosen after considerable reflection. Before going into more detail about the figure shown, we shall describe very briefly the main functions of each of the seven layers. Physical layer it provides the mechanical, electrical, and procedural means for transmitting bits over a communication medium. Data link layer. It provides services for the transmission of data between directly connected systems in a communication network. Network layer. It handles the routing of data through communication networks. Transport layer. It provides reliable and to end services without being concerned about the route through communication networks. Session layer. It provides facilities to organize and synchronize dialogues, that is, communications that consist of several strands such as audio and video components. Presentation layer. 
It deals with issues about how data is represented and ensures that the systems agree on how the information is transferred. And, finally, Application Layer. It provides the means for application programs to access the communication system represented by the OSI reference model. For instance, the application layer can provide services for supporting file transfer and email. Vertical communication is done up and down the protocol stack every time anything is sent across the network and, of course, whenever anything is received. This occurs because the higher levels are implemented as logical functions in software. There is no actual physical connection. The higher layers package data and send it down to the lower layers for it to be sent across the network. At the very lowest level, the data is sent over the network. The interface between two layers in the same system is called a service access point. One of the features of a service access point is that it has an identifier or an address which allows each communication between adjacent layers to be uniquely identified. The notation in this figure is designed to apply to any pair of layers in the reference model. The upper layer is called N plus 1 and the lower layer N. Layer N is the service provider and layer N plus 1 is the service user. The interaction between adjacent layers is expressed in terms of issuing and receiving primitives. For each primitive, up to four basic types are available. A request where an entity invokes a service an indication where an entity is informed of an event. A response where an entity reacts to an event. And, finally, confirm is where an entity is informed of the result of an earlier request. Let's consider how the corresponding layers communicate using protocols. Since machines are only physically connected at layer 1, this means that, in order for a protocol at layer 5 to function, the data on the sending machine must pass down the data through the layers between layer 5 and layer 1. The data is then transmitted over the physical connection to layer 1 of the other machine and passed up the protocol stack of the receiving machine to layer 5. This is how the two machines are logically linked at layer 5, even though they have no physical connection at that layer. Thus, with the exception of the actual physical connection at layer 1, all horizontal communications also require vertical communication down the stack on one machine and then back up the stack on the other. The communication between peer entities through a virtual connection in different systems is sometimes referred to as horizontal communication. There are several functions that can be performed at one or more of the OSI layers. These are connection control, that is, for connection oriented services, a connection must be established between peer entities. Data flow, that is, the user data is passed transparently between peer layers by calling on the service of the layer below. If the data received from the higher layer is too large to fit in the maximum size of protocol data unit, the lower layer will have to split it into smaller chunks. This is called segmentation and additional protocol control information is required to ensure the correct reassembly of the data in the peer layer of the receiving system. Sequencing is if the higher layer requires its data to be received in the order sent and the lower layer does not provide a service with this feature, the upper layer must preserve the order by performing some additional processing. Acknowledgement this is where a layer must take additional actions if its lower layer does not provide a sufficiently reliable means of transferring protocol data units. 
Typically, this involves including identifiers in the protocol control information and the receiving system explicitly acknowledging receipt of the protocol data units. Error control. Transmission errors do occur in networks, causing bits to be received incorrectly. Synchronization. It may be necessary for two systems to agree on the occurrence of events. For example, two databases may have to agree that a record has been updated on both systems. Multiplexing. An entity may have to establish several connections in order to perform a service, or a connection in a lower layer may need to support several connections in a higher layer for reasons of efficiency. The function of sending protocol data units from several connections over a single connection is called multiplexing. Demultiplexing is the reverse process 